So let's review the article that you've read by Jill Sweet about what is, what does Sweet argue is considered aesthetically desirable in Tewa dance? Here are some of the things that I pulled out of the article that she, that she wrote and that you read. The idea of many dancers moving in perfect unison. The idea of a controlled and understated dance style, that no one is standing out or you know, jumping out in the front and being the best, that everyone is kind of understated and controlled. That gestures don't extend far from the body center. So unlike you know, a really high kick or an arm that reaches way, way out to the side, if I do it, my arm will go out of the screen, whoop, but um, that idea. Um, <laughs> Movements are held in close to the center and there's not a lot of um, stretching out or reaching out from that center. Steps, according in sort of the same idea, the steps are small with little elevation. There's no like ginormous leaps. Women keep their gaze low and their manner demure. Men can be a little less exuberant, I'm sorry, a little more exuberant, but a contained style is still essential. So these are some Things that Sweet notices are desirable in Tewa dance, things that um, dancers strive to do, strive to um, present, strive to perform, strive to practice in their dancing. More things that she mentions are this idea of the group moving together, never being disturbed by someone who dances too hard. Again, this idea of someone sticking out. It's much more important to be in sync with everyone else than it is to be the best at what you're doing. She writes about how repetition and elegant simplicity are valued both in the music and the dance, that there's a sort of elegance to the simplicity and uh, what's valued is the repetition, the, the ability to repeat. Those are values that she sees in the dance practice. Sincerity and respect are valued, both in the participants, those dancing, and in the observers. And the idea that those watching are part of the ritual, part of the communal experience, and also responsible for contributing to it. So the onlookers aren't just onlookers, they're also participants. And she talks a bit about humor and how it also is something that's very valued in Tewa dance. And you see humor through imitations, like mocking imitations of people and through symbolic reversals. Humor is also something that is aesthetically valuable in Tewa dance, according to anthropologist Jill Sweet. Both Jill Sweet and the voiceover narrative of the videos that you watched suggest some things about Tewa dance. They suggest that the dance contains power, that the dances are life-affirming and can bring someone back to a good and beautiful path, and they suggest that the dances are transformative, that the, ex the dance experience is one of physical and psychological transformation to a heightened state of being. So these are aspects of the dance that are also mentioned in the reading and the videos that you watched. So let's go from here to think about these observations and these ideas and how we might analyze them. What ideas do these observations reflect and reinforce about what's considered important and valuable in Tewa culture, in the culture and context of Tewa dance? How might we think about the meaning that's being created and communicating in the dancing? In other words, what does what we're noticing suggest? So here's some ways of analyzing or taking what we've noticed and thinking about it a little bit more fully. This idea of unison, the idea that you know, one person shouldn't dance too hard or be more noticeable than another person, that everyone needs to stay together and that what's valued is being a unit and moving in sync together. This suggests that in this culture and context, the needs of the individual are secondary to the needs of the whole community, that it's more important to be in community in connection with others than it is to stand out yourself as an individual. This, um, the repetition and simplicity of movement that Sweet notices. One way of thinking about this might be to say that um, it enables everyone to be included and to be essential in some way. Because it's repeated, you can learn it. Because it's relatively simple, you can pick it up and you can join in. 
So it enables everyone to be included in some way, men and women, children and elders, dancers and viewers. Their roles may be quite different, but there's a place for everyone, and everyone has a way of being part. Um, the idea that um, I think got shown in the videos, if not discussed directly, of subtle changes, of that there's really small, perhaps, but specific and important differences between the way a dance might be done in one community and in another community, in one family, in another family, in one clan, in another clan. One way of thinking about what this values is both it shows the value of memory, the ability to do something like it's been done before, to show that you know it and that you've studied it and that you're able to do it, but also the ability to make and to notice subtle variations in movements. So there's a real value of memory and creativity and attentivity, I would say, the being attentive to small differences, to seeing and noticing that's being valued in this dancing. Um, another thing that's being um, valued is or the, note, the idea that dance enacts change, that dance has power, um, brings up the idea that Dancing is not just entertainment or for fun, um, that dances do something, that they contain and create connections across time. They alter people in the world. So there's an idea that this dancing is crucial and uh, vital and that it is not just um, you know, exercise or something to do to you know, keep yourself occupied, that it has a real force in the world and a belief in and an understanding of and a value of that force of change. So one of the things that looking carefully at dancing can do is show us what's important to a group of people, including what kinds of behavior are valued, what conceptions of, say, religion or connection to the forces of creation are being engaged with, um, that dance is something that can enact a force or a change in the world, what historic and also we haven't looked at this yet here, but to think about what historical and political structures are being reinforced and by and have affected this group of dancers. These are things that we can see in by looking at the dancing carefully. Um, so to review that idea in this particular context, in this particular example, um, the question of politics and history. We notice that um, or I asked you to think about, and hopefully you noticed, that in the examples that you looked at, the singing was in Tewa, it's in an indigenous language, and the voiceover is in English. So you see two languages going on here, a multiple multiplicity of linguistic locations, and we can think about how this shows a history of um, colonization of indigenous peoples in this region by English-speaking people that you have languages that are being spoken within the group to the dancers between themselves as they sing um, with one another and for one another. And then there's English that's being used to communicate and um, express and make known some of what's going on to people who aren't part of that community. You can see that in the way that the dance is being represented in the film. Religion. You can think about the way that the weight and the energy of the dancers is being directed down. There's not a lot of elevation. There's not a lot of leaps. The energy is going down and staying fairly close to the earth. It suggests um, earth-based ideas of where power and divinity lie. It suggests that, that going into the earth is what's valued. We could think about that just by looking at the movement. Behavior. We can Think about how the way that the dancers move together most of the time, with no one dancer being forwarded as the best, and the way that what's valued is being modest and kind of demure and looking down and not standing out and suggesting humility, uh, th that these suggest humility and group connection as really important values in this dance form. That this dance form, if you think of it as a kind of history book or as a etiquette guide or as a, you know, manual to a way of being in the world is teaching these different things. It's teaching this history and this politics. It's teaching this understanding of where power lies and how power works. And it's teaching particular kinds of behavior. Next, we're going to look at ballet. 
and the cultural and political values that are being created, reinforced, and communicated in ballet. So let's start by watching a couple of examples, or um, one particular example, and looking at some images. <laughs> <laughs> 